Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. And today I want to talk about this, this clock here. So it's a 12-inch analog clock with three hands, as you can see, and, you know, just very simple, nice, you know, probably a little bit, at 12 inches across, it's probably a little bit larger than your average clock you might find at your discount retail store around town. If you're looking for just a basic clock, you know, that's a nice looking clock, isn't it? But look at what it does. Okay, first of all, it's got those fancy hands and that's, you know, just kind of a thin wire with an open uh, design in there for the hour hand and the minute hand. Then over here, this second hand is a sweep second hand. So instead of uh, what you might find on your quartz clocks generally, where it ticks, you know, a, a distinct tick every second, right? It's just a continuous sweep almost like a mechanical watch, right? So, yeah, I'm, I have to get used to this because I really like to know right down to the second what the time is. And so I kind of like that distinct ticking. But then this is just kind of elegant and quiet. So I do have some, some people in my family who are, I would say, light sleepers. And if you put a clock in the bedroom that ticks, they'll hear that at night, it'll bother them. So this is quiet. I would, I would play the recording of how quiet it is, but uh, you know, what's the use there? It is quiet. And you'll see every about 10 seconds, the, um, you know, the minute hand will, will just kind of click forward just a little bit. So there's that movement there and you can kind of see just to confirm that yes, it's actually moving. Uh, otherwise, just a nice, elegant clock. Now, the thing that really sells me on this one, the reason I wanted this clock is that it is uh, an atomic time receiver and it uses Wi-Fi to set itself. So I know there are places in the world where, you know, the, well, what Casio calls multiband six doesn't work. Multiband six is just another, that, that's Casio's term for uh, what they use to, put radio receivers inside their, their watches to automatically set themselves to the right time. So for example, here in North America, there's WWVB, uh, a radio station in, in Fort Collins, Colorado. And so that's connected to an atomic clock and it, and it transmits atomic time information over these long range radio uh, broadcasts. So if you have an atomic clock receiver, built into a clock that might may, maybe look something like this, or it's a wristwatch, or it's a, you know, a digital clock or whatever. Uh, if you're within range and you get good radio reception from the atomic time transmitter in Fort Collins, then your clock will automatically set itself to the right time and double check itself uh, once a day or maybe multiple times a day to make sure it stays accurate all the time. And so this, it's the same same idea, but using Wi-Fi, because there are places where just the materials that are used to build the building that you're in, uh, they interfere with radio reception, especially if it's a big corporate building with a lot of steel and concrete <laughs> construction. It may be very difficult to receive radio stations, including the one that, um, that does your, you know, your atomic time broadcasts. So a way around that which may solve the problem for a lot of folks is, is one of these Wi-Fi clocks because Wi-Fi tends to, you know, using different frequencies and different technology, um, Wi-Fi tends to work fine in places where just radio station reception might be difficult. So this uses Wi-Fi to set itself. And I noticed on the reviews for this clock that I was seeing on Amazon, some of the reviews were, hey, it's great, I love this clock, it works great. And then, you know, there's the opposite spectrum, <laughs> opposite end of the spectrum, where people are saying, it's terrible. It never worked. It's too difficult to set up. It took me five hours to set it up. Or I tried, you know, five times and I never could get it to connect to Wi-Fi and it was just, it was terrible. And I looked at that and I thought, oh, maybe I can help, right? <laughs> this is the good timekeeping show. I think I can help with this. I went to set this one up and it was a breeze. So, um, so let me see if I can help you if you're having trouble with this. I have a lot of devices in my house that hook up to the, the Wi-Fi network in my house. So for example, a thermostat. Um, I can use my phone to 
change the setting on the thermostat, you know, turn the air conditioner on or off or the heater on or off. I can, I can schedule times when that happens. So, you know, there are a lot of smart thermostat kind of things that, that are not connected to Wi-Fi or the internet that just, you know, you've got a programmable timer on your thermostat in your house and that's it. Then there are these ones that are, you know, smarter <laughs> that you can control over Wi-Fi or on the internet. So, I mean, technically with my current thermostat, I could be across the country somewhere. And as long as I have the internet, get out my phone and I can turn off the heater in my house from wherever I am with the internet, right? So or I've got light switches so I can uh, turn on lights in the house when I'm not home or put those on timers or, you know, this, so that the, the, all the lights in my house turn on five minutes before I get home, you know, that sort of thing. I, I can do all of that. So this the, the setup for Wi-Fi has to be similar, right? So here's the thing. Uh, just uh, just a, a day or two before this actually arrived at our house, they emailed uh, a PDF to our, you know, through our Amazon account to t tell us how, how to run the clock, all the instructions. Now, these instructions were included also in the box when I got the clock, but I just thought, you know, maybe the company's feeling a little bit of pressure from people who say, this doesn't work. So they make sure they sent out the instructions. So, um, uh, let's see, I'll show you that. Let me just first show you the back of the clock. See, there's pretty simple. It has what would look like a typical quartz movement. Just these two buttons are the only controls on it. And then it uses two double a batteries. I mean, a lot of the just regular old off the shelf quartz clock movements, they only use one and even some with atomic timekeeping use one. But this one with the, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi uses two AA batteries. And I think it says here that it should last about 10 months. So maybe that would be a little bit of a hassle for you. It's like, oh man, you know, every 10 months I got to change the batteries. We'll see. I just got this myself, so I don't know exactly. But if it's just a matter of take it off the wall, change two batteries, put it back on the wall and you're good to go. Maybe not such a big deal. And also, of course, you get, you know, the, the clock that sets itself and is always correct. Okay, so uh, let's start by, I'm going to pull these batteries out and we'll start over and I will now show you how to set this up to connect to your, uh, your Wi-Fi network in your home or office where you're going to use this clock. All right, to start off, I'm just going to, um, you know, reinsert the batteries. And now the clock's going to start to kind of calibrate its hands. So, uh, you know, the hour and minute hands are are connected to each other. <laughs> so they're moving together and they're going to try and, you know, rest eventually at the 12 o'clock straight up position. And the second hand also is going to do a little bit of calibration there. So while that's happening, maybe I can go to my phone and do the Wi-Fi setup. So first of all, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the settings on my phone and it's showing me all the different uh, Wi-Fi networks that are available, you know, from my own home or maybe the neighbors. And one of the uh, one of the Wi-Fi networks I can access it says Wi-Fi clock on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect to that on my phone. So right there, SSID is where I'm going to select from the available Wi-Fi networks that uh, are here, you know, around my house. And there, it's going to show me a list. And I'm going to select the one that I actually want it to connect to, that is my, my home network. And then I'll put in the password for that uh, network right here. Then I'm going to select my time zone. And in this case, it's going to be GMT, uh, let's see, GMT minus seven for me. Then there's an adjustment time. So do I want it to check itself at 9 a.m., 10 a.m.? That would be 9 or 10 p.m. I'll say at 10 p.m. That's when I want it to to set itself and check itself all the time. So then I tap save. And at that point, the clock starts to set itself. And also my phone has gone back to my regular home network that it would connect to if I wanted to be on my home Wi-Fi. So what's happening right now is the clock is now going to race around and set itself to the right time based on the you know, what it's receiving from time servers on the internet. And as soon as it uh, sets itself to the right time, it's going to run normally. And that's how you go. Now, now there, 
when I first did this, it was just that straightforward. When I tried to do it over again, a kind of a factory reset, start from scratch so I could demonstrate this to you, it was a little bit buggy. It might only give me about a minute to try to reconnect to my phone before it started to say, it, it, it kind of kicked me off the little Wi-Fi network that was created in here. So if that happens, the way that you kind of reset its it's wanting to connect to your uh, to your phone to do the initial setup is you take those two buttons right there and you hold the both of them down for three seconds and that sort of resets its uh, you know its initial Wi-Fi setup. But when I first did this, when it wasn't already set to do something in my house, it was much more straightforward than that. So maybe that's the frustration that some people are expressing that uh, it it timed out when they were trying to do the setup. And so, yeah, that might be something to, uh, to keep in mind. Now on my phone, as soon as I connected to this Wi-Fi network to set it up, it, it went right into what looked kind of like a web browser page. It just went right to it. But if it doesn't do that automatically, then this is something you have to do a lot of times, uh, setting up home network devices. So you type in 192.168.4.1 and have it connect to that on your Wi-Fi clock. And I suppose now that I look at this, um, maybe it's not necessary to do this with a mobile device. Maybe you could do this entire setup with um, you know, a regular computer to connect to the Wi-Fi. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, I guess I could. If it, if it doesn't work, maybe I'll do a follow-up video and tell you about that. So, but that's the way to get into the uh, network settings if it doesn't automatically come up on your phone. Now, now I, I have to admit this, uh, this clock was attractive because it doesn't cost that much. It cost me about $34. And I noticed today, I looked at it right now, it's listed for $39 at Amazon. But if you click on a little button next to the price, it, there's, right now, it's got a coupon that you can get. I don't know how long that deal is going to last. So we'll see how, how that goes. But as you can see, it's it's going around to try and set itself, and I'll just kind of let it sit there for a moment and see how that does. Uh, the only the thing I don't know about this is how does it handle daylight saving time? There is a uh, there's a little uh, chart here that says something about daylight saving time, but I don't know if it will automatically adjust itself for daylight saving time when uh, when that happens, or if I'll need to go and do a reset on daylight saving time and kind of set it up all over again with a different GMT offset to make it work right. I don't know. See, so right there now, it's showing not daylight saving time because of the way I set it up. But uh, other than that, it's showing the correct time for my time zone if, it, if there were not daylight saving time right down to the second. And it's just going to do that. Now, um, the only other thing to note here from these instructions uh, th this has a little bit of a time saver mode. So between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., the second hand is designed to stop at the 12 o'clock position while the other hands continue to move. I've noticed on this, and I haven't been looking at it, you know, all day, every day, but it does seem like every now and then the second hand will stop during the day and then maybe restart. So I don't know, uh, maybe a little buggy, maybe I need to do a follow up video <laughs> on this after I've had it a little bit longer. And I can uh, tell you exactly if it's doing anything quirky or not. But for the most part, uh, once I get it set to the right time zone, and it just runs like this, and it's quiet, and it's nice, and it doesn't cost all that much for a Wi Fi clock, you may want to try it out for 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 a low price like that, or maybe it's a little too buggy still, I don't know. Uh, I'll let you know when we reach the end of daylight saving time, what this clock does. Something I think I need to acknowledge here is that this clock here has an atomic clock movement in it, or atomic time receiver movement in it. So this one is ticking away at, uh, you know, what matches the time on my wave scepter watches and stuff. So this is showing the correct time. And if I look at this one here, it looks like it's about a second slow. And at first I wasn't sure if that was just because it's a continuous movement that maybe it just looks like it's slow, but it really, as I go side by side here, it really does look like it's slow. This is what happened to me when I first set it up a few days ago. And then after it was running for about a day, 
I noticed that it had corrected itself and it was, you know, it, it looked like it was synchronized better with atomic time. So don't be too discouraged if you see that behavior when you first set it up. Let it run for a day or two and um, that's, that's going to correct itself. And we'll take it from there. But uh, that's how you set it up anyway. And you, you can try it out. I, I'm a little, <laughs> I, I gotta, I've got to be honest. I'm a little unsure of it right now just because the daylight saving time thing might, might seem like uh, you know, more trouble than I'm used to on these automatic clocks. But we'll follow up on that later. I'll tell you for sure what it does. In the meantime, yeah, don't be too afraid of this. See what you think. I don't know. And I'll see you again soon with another episode of the Good Timekeeping Show.